Rashid Nejmetdinov is known for his great attacks and sacrifices. In this game he also sacrifices material and initiates a brilliant attack, but still this game stands out. Nejmetdinov's attack in this game can be considered enigmatic, as he sacrifices material but hides his true intentions until the very end of the game. His opponent doesn't suspect anything and accepts the sacrifice, after which Nezhmetinov makes his fantastic move and reveals his secret. White starts with e4, Nezhmetinov plays e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Spanish opening. Nezhmetinov opts for the Steinitz defense deferred, first a6 and only after the bishop retreats d6, reinforcing his central pawn and opening the light squared bishop's diagonal. The d6 pawn is closing the dark squared bishop's diagonal, so black is going to fianchet to this bishop. In case white makes the most natural looking move d4, he wouldn't get any advantage because after b5, bishop b3, knight takes, knight takes, and e takes d, it turns out that white cannot return the pawn. If he captures on c5, uh, on uh, d4, his bishop would be uh, trapped because black would push his c pawn forward with a tempo attacking the queen and after the queen retreats by playing c4 black would trap the white bishop that's why white prepares the advance of his d-pawn by playing c3 first bishop d7 followed unpinning the knight now white plays d4 g6 preparing the fianchetto of the bishop short castle and bishop g7 now black puts a lot of pressure on the d4-pawn attacking it three times that's why white reinforces the pawn bishop e3 knight f6 followed attacking the e4 pawn that's why knight d2 defending it nezhmetinov castles and white plays rook e1 developing the rook and vacating the f1 square for the knight so white is going to reroute the d2 knight to the king side nezhmetinov plays knight h5 targeting the f4 square and unblocking the f pawn which might move forward later in the game knight f1 b5 bishop c2 and Nezhmetinov captures on d4. Of course, in case white captures with the bishop, black would simply exchange his knight for the bishop and get the advantage of two bishops. Another option white has is to capture on d4 with the pawn, but this option also has its drawback. As you see at the moment, the c3 pawn, which is supported by the b2 pawn, is restricting black's dark squared bishop. But in case white captures on d4, the bishop's activity would increase and the d4 pawn would turn into a target of attack. By playing bishop g4, black would pin the white knight, which is defending the pawn, and create an immediate threat of bishop takes f3, after which white will have a very unpleasant choice, either to capture with the queen, and after that the queen would stop defending the pawn and black would simply capture it, or to capture with the g pawn, of course, after that, uh, white's uh, pawn structure on the king side would be demolished. And uh, in case white pushes the pawn forward in order to save the pawn, the b2 pawn would turn into the target of attack. Black would play knight e5, again threatening to capture on f3 and uh, destroy white's pawn structure. White can prevent this by playing knight d2, but after knight takes f3, knight takes f3, the b2 pawn would fall and black would be up a pawn. For this reason, instead of c takes d, white captures on d4 with the knight. But this move also has its drawback. Now that white doesn't have a pawn on d4, which would control the e5 square, the black knight can invade this square. Knight e5. White is playing in the attacking style and makes a strong move. Knight f5. He's going to exchange his knight for the bishop. And the dark squared bishop plays a very important defensive role. It's the main defender of the dark squares of, of black's king side, so black must avoid the exchange. Of course, he cannot capture on f5 with his g pawn because the pawn must keep an eye on the h5 knight. In case black captures on f5, white would immediately return the piece and black's pawn structure on the king side would be destroyed. For this reason, Nezhmetinov saves his bishop by playing bishop f6. White increases the pressure. Bishop h6, bringing his bishop closer to the black king with a tempo attacking the rook and vacating the e3 square for the passive f1 knight. Rook e8 followed and knight e3. Now this knight controls the c4 square, preventing the black knight from jumping on this square. 
and that means white can play a four next move, kicking out the knight, which might be quite unpleasant because the black knight cannot jump to c4 and it would be forced to return to c6. In order to prevent this, Nezhmetinov plays bishop g5, taking under control the f4 square and preventing white from pushing his f pawn. Of course, white could have exchanged the bishops by capturing on g5, but it seems that white didn't want to let black activate his queen. After queen takes g5, the black queen would be quite strong. Besides that, it would defend the h5 knight, and that means the g-pawn doesn't need to defend the knight anymore, and black is threatening to capture on f5. So white would be forced to move away his great knight from f5. And besides that, the queen, together with the knight, which might jump to f4 later in the game, might create quite unpleasant threats to the white king. For this reason, after Nezhmetinov played bishop g5, instead of capturing on g5, white played knight d5, centralizing his knight. Now both of his knights are quite strong, greatly placed, and creating an immediate threat. As you see, the queen is the only defender of the bishop. So white is threatening to capture on c7, and if the black queen captures the knight, white would simply capture on g5 and be up a pawn. And objectively now, it would be better for black to exchange the bishops by capturing on h6. It's true, white would capture the bishop and black wouldn't have the dark squared bishop anymore to defend the important squares. But white wouldn't have the dark squared bishop to attack these squares either. And after king g7 and knight f5 check, the position would remain more or less equal. But it seems that Nezhmetinov wanted to complicate the game. So instead of natural bishop takes h6, he plays c6, attacking the knight and inviting knight c7. And that's exactly what white did. And again, the objectively strongest move, according to computer, would be queen takes c7 because the knight is forking the rooks but after queen takes c7 although computer shows that white would have only a slight advantage after of course after the queen captures on c7 the bishop is under attack so white would capture so materially the position would be um, equal and although computer shows that white has only a slight advantage actually from the human perspective, of course, this position would be absolutely terrible for black, because black wouldn't have the dark squared bishop to defend these squares, while white would still retain the dark squared bishop to attack these squares. Besides that, black doesn't have any counterplay in this position. Of course, Nezhmetinov didn't feel like playing this kind of position. So instead of queen takes c7, which would retain the material balance, he decides to sacrifice the material. So, he, instead of capturing the knight, he plays knight f4, which is the best practical uh, chance. By playing knight f4, Nezhmetinov has created an immediate threat. Now that his knight has left the h5 square and the g6 pawn doesn't need to defend it anymore, black is threatening to capture on f5. And the f5 knight cannot retreat. Of course, if the knight retreats, then the h6 pawn, uh, bishop would fall. Black would simply capture it. So uh, the knight must defend the bishop. Uh, however, actually, of course, uh, white had the strongest move, after which he would uh, get a very big advantage. So he had to accept the sacrifice, the exchange sacrifice, right away, leaving his f5 knight under attack and capturing the rook. And it turns out that black cannot capture the knight in this variation, because of simple queen takes d6 and white is threatening checkmate on f8. In order to prevent the checkmate, black can capture on h6, but after queen takes h6, white has another terrible threat, knight f6, check, and after king moves to h8, of course, queen takes h7, checkmate. Besides that, the, qu the queen would attack the f4 knight. So in order to prevent terrible knight f6 check, black must eliminate this knight, but after queen takes f4, of course, white is up the exchange, black's pawn structure is destroyed, white is winning. So, after uh, knight takes e8, which was the strongest move and wasn't played by white, uh, black cannot capture the knight, and he would be forced to capture the e8 knight instead, and again, 
it seems that Blackwood threatened to capture the knight, and again the knight cannot retreat because the h6 bishop would fall. And it seems that in this position, in his calculations, White didn't find the strongest move, which was rook e3, which would indirectly defend the knight, because after rook e3, black still cannot capture the knight. That would be a mistake, because White would simply exchange the bishops, and after queen takes uh, g5, as you see, uh, after black captured on f5, the g file is open, and white would simply play rook g3, pinning the queen. The only way to save the queen would be knight g4, but of course it doesn't help, because this knight is doomed. White would simply uh, eliminate the f5 pawn, which is the defender of the knight, by capturing it, and white is threatening to capture the knight, and there is no way to save it. h5 doesn't work either, because of h3, and the knight would fall anyways. However, it seems that white didn't find this uh, continuation, of course, after knight takes uh, e8, the rook e3 wasn't an easy move to find, so instead he played simply bishop takes g5. Nezhmetinov, of course, captures on g5, creating two threats, first checkmate on g2 and second to capture the knight, but white prepared knight g3, parrying both of these threats and his knight is still on the c7 square forking the rooks, so white will still be up the exchange. One of these rooks will fall. But now Nezhmetinov finds the additional attacking resource, the h-pawn. He pushes it forward, h5, threatening to move it even further, attacking the knight, and it turns out that after that the knight cannot retreat because of checkmate on g2. White finally accepts the exchange sacrifice and captures on a8. Rook takes a8 followed, and it seems that White wasn't scared of h4. He is already up the exchange, so he is ready to sacrifice this knight, so he simply captures on d6. Nezhmetinov, of course, plays h4. The knight cannot retreat because of the checkmate, so White plays a4. He's going to open the A file for his rook. He's going to capture on B5 next move. Of course, black cannot capture with the A pawn after that, as his rook would fall. So after white captures on B5, black uh, will have to capture with the C pawn, after which the A file would open and the queen's uh, line would open and the A6 pawn would fall. So besides the exchange, white will also win a pawn. And we have reached the critical position. Now you can pause the video and try to find Nezhmetinov's fantastic initial idea. So, of course, White expected H takes G, as the vast majority of the chess players would also expect. Indeed, why should Black spend two tempi by moving his H pawn first to H5 and then to H4 in order to attack the knight and then? Um, refraining from capturing this knight. And white was ready to this, and in case black captured the knight, he prepared h takes g, attacking the knight, and after the knight retreats, let's say to e6, white can play f4, forking the knight and the queen, and after queen takes g3, white would capture the knight, black can activate his knight, threatening checkmate on g2, but the queen can return, defend against the checkmate, and white would still be up the exchange. However, now we can see Nezhmetinov's true intentions. By moving his pawn forward, he didn't even think about the knight. He actually just used the enemy knight to confuse his opponent, to make his opponent believe that the true target of the h-pawn was the knight. But actually, the target of this pawn was the king. So Nezhmetinov completely ignores the knight and instead of capturing it, pushes the pawn forward, h3. And only now white understood Nezhmetinov's true idea. So he's going to capture on g2, destroying white's pawn structure on the king side, after which the light squares on white's king side will be catastrophically weakened and black will create checkmating threats. Of course, in case white captures on h3 himself, that would be only in black's favor because the bishop would be brought into attack with great effect. The bishop together with the knights and the queen will create deadly threats to the white uh, king 
black is threatening right now uh, checkmate in two moves by playing knight f3 check and after king uh, h1 bishop g2 checkmate so after h3 white didn't capture on h3 instead he captures on b5 Nezhmetinov isn't in a hurry to capture on g2 instead he captures on b5 now the a file opens so white captures on a6 attacking the rook that's why Nezhmetinov exchanges the rooks queen takes a6 and only now he captures on g2 so now you can see the power of Nezhmetinov's idea. The pawn completely restricts the white king. The white king doesn't have a single move. The f4 knight is defending the pawn. And the second knight is threatening to checkmate the white king by jumping to f3. In order to prevent the deadly knight f3, white plays bishop d1. Taking under control the f3 square. Now this bishop is the main defender of the light squares. So it's necessary to remove the key defender. That's why Nezhmetinov plays bishop g4. Again creating an immediate threat. Bishop takes d1. Rook takes d1. After which the defender would be eliminated. And knight f3 checkmate. In order to prevent this. White plays queen a1. Defending his bishop. Now in case black captures on d1 the white queen would replace the bishop on d1 and control the f3 square of course Nezhmetinov doesn't exchange the bishops now that the queen can replace it instead he makes a much stronger move bishop f3 now the bishop defends the pawn and that means the f4 knight doesn't need to defend this pawn anymore and it's free to move so now black is threatening to checkmate the white king by move by jumping to h3 instead of f3 and of course white cannot capture the bishop because again knight takes f3 would be checkmate in order to prevent deadly knight h3 checkmate white plays queen a8 check and after king h7 queen c8 taking under control the h3 square but now that the white queen has left a1 and it isn't defending the bishop Nezhmetinov exchanges the bishops eliminating the main defender of the light squares and vacating the f3 square for the knight of course white cannot capture the bishop because of checkmate in one and there is nothing white can do to prevent the deadly invasion of the knight on f3 for this reason in this position white resigned and now I recommend watching a game in which Nezhmetinov finds a brilliant queen sacrifice in a seemingly hopeless position but first like this video and subscribe as it's really helpful for the channel growth.